Welcome to day three of the 131 Project 21 Days of Reset. My name is David Chan. I'm one of the leaders here in City Life Soul, and I have the honor of sharing with you guys today. Today we'll look into Ecclesiastes 3. If you'd open your Bibles to follow along, let's read together. So, Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is a gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the sun. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. I also said to myself, as for humans, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animals. Surely the fate of human beings is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All, the, all have the same breath. Humans have no advantage over animals. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place, all come from dust, and to dust all return. Who knows if the human spirit rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better for a person than to enjoy their work, because that is a lot. For who can bring them to see what will happen after time, after them? This is the word of the Lord. So as I was studying into the book of Ecclesiastes, I wanted to understand the setting of the scriptures. As we think Solomon is the author of this book, I was interested in the period of his life when this was written. Some commentaries say that uh, Solomon wrote in his younger days a song of songs. Proverbs was, Proverbs was collected during the middle years of his life, and Ecclesiastes was written towards the end of his life when he was turning back to the Lord after his worldly life. And scholars agree that the text can be interpreted with different tones. My interpretation is not of advice that comes from skepticism or cynicism, nor a been there done that attitude towards life, but it's a confession of Solomon's life and the insights he gained throughout, confessing that God is the only enabling factor in this world. So let's look at verses 1 through 8. Uh, the session is a poem about seasons, seasons in life. There's a time for everything from beginning to end and everything in between. And in verse 9, it says, What do workers gain from the toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. It sounds cynical, but let's read on. Verse 11, He has made everything, everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom God's work. The burden God has laid on the human race can be seen as a, like, a life, and the toil is us living in it. From season to season, the good and the bad. But as God has made the good in our lives beautiful, it says he actually made everything beautiful in its time, which means even the bad. And he lets us know the beauty and his eternity in our hearts, but we cannot fathom it because I think because God wants us to continue to reach out to him, continue to search for him. And because if we know it all, we wouldn't pursue him. Let's continue to verse 14. Everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added or subtracted. It is forever because there is no beginning and end for God, and nothing can be changed in between either because it is perfect. 
God made it so, so that people fear him. But not the fear that we feel when we see someone chasing us down the street with a knife in their hand, or seeing someone in a subway without a mask. But a fear that's of adoration, of respect, of dependence. The God that made us and our life perfect is the God we need as he is the only enabler. In college, I used to flip burgers as a part of, uh, as part of my uh, part-time job. And one day, one of my coworkers said that the burger she made was perfect. And the annoying little philosophy major named David Chun replied by saying, something can only be perfect when there is absolutely no way of improving it. If there's even one single thing that can be done to make it better, then it can't be called perfect. But it's because of the false improvements that we can say the word perfect. Something is only perfect because it is made up of imperfections. In the seasons in our life where there's a time for everything, the good and the bad, from beginning to end, it is perfect. Our joy and celebrations are only joyful and celebratory because we struggled and toiled. We understand the value of laughter because we experience tears. God has made the toils in our lives perfect through the imperfections we toil. God reveals himself as the one and only source of life by allowing us to experience all that are not. When you are struggling or are anxious about what's happening in your life, be joyful because it is all part of the perfection God prepared for you. He will use your toils for good. Looking into verse 18 and on, it states that humans and animals are the same, all die in the end, going back to dust. Ending the chapter with verse 22 by saying, a person should just enjoy their work because we're stuck with it. I don't think this is the author's hopeless words that yells, everything is meaningless, but he's confessing that things are meaningless without the enabling of God. There is nothing better for a person to do than to enjoy their work because there is nothing better than living out the perfect life God laid out for us. And I believe that also was Solomon's confession. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here in front of our screens, our phones, Lord, just watching this video, uh, taking part in this 131 project. Bless everyone who is taking part, Lord. Uh, as we come before you with... Uh, our confessions that our life is meaningless without you. We pray that you uh, send your spirit down, be present in our lives, so that we may live a perfect, we may live the perfect life you have for us, Lord. And I pray that you uh, fill our hearts with humility, knowing that our life is only complete with you, Lord. As we move on to the uh, the next days of this 131 project, there will be temptations, there will be struggles. There will be battles that we have to fight, Lord, to keep this going. But, Lord, give us the strength to step forward and move on, Lord, stepping forth with victory through your name. And, Lord, as we uh, experience your love and your grace each and every day through this time, Lord, may that love and grace reach out to those around us as well. Lord, thank you always for blessing us and loving us endlessly and unconditionally. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.